Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I have a photo that I've already edited and I do videos like this every now and then, but I get a lot of questions about like, what's your thought process, Jim? Why do you do this? That sort of thing. And so I thought what I'd do is take this uh, video and kind of walk through what I've already done to a photo and why. So it's less about, hey, here's three tips for better sunsets or whatever. And this is more like the thought process behind the edit, what I'm trying to achieve, what tools I use, to achieve that and how I go about it and that sort of thing. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do that. So let's uh, you know follow along, I guess, and let's get going. Here's my photo. Now this is a large waterfall in Iceland. I just got back. It was an amazing trip, and I set up my tripod. I waited for people to clear, so I wanted to kind of get the path. It kind of curves off to the left, but I feel like it kind of leads you slightly to that thin, misty uh, waterfall on the left, uh, and then your eye kind of goes to the bigger waterfall in the center and then maybe it follows a stream back down. I don't know. I like the photo. I don't love the photo, admittedly, but I want to talk about what I did to the edit because what I ended up with after editing is that. And so I tried to emphasize a few things and I'm going to walk through that thought process now. So I'm going to pop over to edits. And if you look at edits, um, <laughs> there's a lot of them. And that's because I just wanted to, to do a lot of things. So I'm going to go down to raw develop. I always recommend starting here. I always recommend shooting raw. And what I did here is Pretty simple stuff. I mean, nothing major, right? So this is just my general kind of getting started, balance the light a little bit. And I do want to point out that there's no masking in Develop Raw. You're working with that base raw file. There's no masking because you're, uh, you know, it's just not permitted for life of a better term in Develop Raw. You're working with that raw data and it's like your base layer, let's call it. Everything else that you do, you can kind of think of as an adjustment layer above that. So you can mask those in. You just can't mask and develop raw. I get that question sometimes. So hopefully that helps answer it. Not a massive change here, but you know, before and after a little bit of tones, brought down the highlights, blacks and whites, a little bit of temperature difference, things like that. So that's my base edit with the raw file, but then I jump into super contrast. And as you can see, what I do here is from there, to here. So not a huge change before and after. Slightly more uh, darkness, you know, slight darkening of the sky before and after. I think the waterfall pops a little bit more before and after. General, just those are my one-two punches, right? Develop raw, super contrast, 99% of the time, that's how I start an edit. But then I start to get into, you know, hey, what do I want to do to the photo? And maybe I have an idea before I've actually done those first two steps. But sometimes I do those just to kind of get my, they're, they're my setting the stage edits. Um, but then I uh, will look at it and say, well, what do I want to do? And this is when I start going into masking, uh, color, detail, all those kind of things. And there's a lot of masking that I do here because as you saw with the end result, it's quite a bit different, but I was very targeted with a lot of things. So let's jump into the next one, which is develop again. And so any subsequent use of develop, meaning not the develop raw, but any other time you can mask away. And that's what I did here. So if I click on mask and mask actions and show, you'll see a linear gradient in the sky. Now you might say, Hey Jim, use mask AI and use the sky. And that identifies it well, but I don't do that very often for skies. And the reason why is because, um, it's a hundred percent of the sky but it never is perfect along the edge. There's always a tiny little bit that needs to kind of be brushed in. And I do that with a lower strength brush. But I honestly, when I've got a sky and I just kind of want to fade whatever I'm doing in the sky into the photo, I think a linear gradient coming down from the top with the generous fade is a better approach. That's my personal opinion. So, you know, I drop the gradient and I start fading it and it fades to the edge. Basically, you can kind of see that. So what I did here was slight drop in exposure, slight increase in contrast, some blacks and whites. I don't think I did anything in color. Yeah, nothing in color. So if you look at the before and after for the sky, before and after, slightly darker, that sort of thing. So I think you got that. Um, then I go to develop again. And this time I'm gonna pop over here and you may have seen what happened, which is the waterfalls got brighter. So if I show you the mask one more time, I took a brush and I painted it in the waterfalls and I missed a little bit. I'm kind of sloppy, but um, I generally just paint it over the waterfalls because I want to accentuate the, uh, I want to attract the eye to the waterfall. So you can do that in a few different ways, high amount of detail, high amount of color or brighter. In this case, I don't want color or detail in my waterfalls, but I do want them brighter and I want them whiter. So 
mask it in, lift the exposure, pull down the smart contrast. I'm gonna show you that uh, why I did that in a minute, and bump a little bit in the white. So slight increase in whites, slight increase in exposure. The reason I dropped the contrast, there it is, uh, with zero contrast. If I go to the right, you'll see, uh, you know, it has an impact, it does make it stand out. But if you go to the left, when you reduce the contrast on something like that, it kind of fades it out, makes it a little bit more hazy looking. And I think that fits in with the mistiness because there's a ton of water coming off this waterfall. Um, I think that adds to the, uh, the kind of hazy mistiness. And I think I was like a negative eight or nine or 10. I'll leave it at 10, but that's one of the reasons I do that. Sometimes with waterfalls is reduce contrast to create a little additional haze. Something I like to do. So before, after, my waterfalls are looking good. I'm gonna get develop again. So I've already used develop raw and then one, two, this will be my third use of develop. And if you look up here, I got another one coming. So uh, last time waterfall before and after, let's go get develop again. And this time, if you do the before and after, you can see I've darkened the rock around the waterfall. So I was focused on that center of the photo. And again, this is a move to help uh, get the waterfalls to stand out. You can only make them so bright without them either looking odd or getting blown out. Another way to make them stand out is to darken what's behind them, which is all that rock. And so this was once again a brush mask. Uh, if you can tell here, a lower strength, it's not a full strength brush, but I just painted it in along the rock around the, um, the waterfalls. And then I just dropped the exposure and I didn't do anything with black and white. So dropped the exposure, you know, about a negative two and just darkened it. So before and after it makes the waterfall stand out a little bit, that is effectively dodge and burn. I dodge and burn would develop every photo just about. Um, if you want a video on that, uh, it's, it's something I've been adding to my workflow and experimenting with. So if that sounds interesting to you, leave me a comment down below. Okay, after doing all those moves, I thought, you know what's cool is I like the grass. I like the grass here on this right-hand side as it follows the trail and kind of edges the river and kind of leads you towards the river. That's like a leading line, as is the path, of course. But I also really like the stuff on the left-hand side. But what I don't like is, um, even though it's green, and this was in August, it's not green enough. It's more yellow. It's, it's late summer. Um, and my suspicion is pretty soon it's going to, you know, die because it's going to get really cold. I want to make it greener. So I go into color and I turn it into that. And the way to do that is to go into HSL and change the hue on the green, drag it to the right. But also, and this is really important if you want to make those greens pop, is drag the yellow hue to the right because it will really change the look of a photo. Let me reset that. There it is with zero hue on yellow. But you can see as I drag it, and I think I was at 50 something, let's I think 57 or 58, it gets really green. And that's because every time you play with the uh, yellows, it's gonna impact the look of something that's green. There's just a whole lot of yellow in anything that looks green. So even though it looked kind of green before and after, the hugest impact was really the hue of the yellow. So something to think about. And in addition to hue, I also played with saturation, brought them down a little bit because they were getting pretty intense looking. And luminance, I brightened the yellow because again, that yellow, even though it looks mostly green now, a huge component, as you just saw, of that color look or that color hue is actually from the yellow. So I brightened it because if it's darker, there it is, a little bit darker, but I had like a 12 or 15 or something. I'll leave it at 15. It's gonna brighten the look of that green by lifting the luminance of the yellow channel. I didn't even touch saturation or vibrance, and if you look at the colors before and after, I think it's looking way better. Okay, now we're on to develop again, and this time, if you look at the before and the after, you can see on that left-hand side, that little spot, this is just a radial mask on that section of flowers kind of thing. And all I'm doing is putting a spotlight, like a, a highlight on them. So that's what the mask looks like. All I did is come in and brighten that exposure. I don't think I played with anything. I didn't even play with color here. I just lifted, uh, lifted the exposure there a little bit. So before and after, I just wanted to draw the attention to it a little bit. The sun is setting behind me to the right. I was here for a couple of different sunsets while I was in Iceland, and the sun is setting essentially behind me so it would be hitting that spot but even without this before and after you can see that there's a little bit of light hitting it i just accentuated that a little bit i kind of liked how it kind of anchored that uh corner of the photo now after that i went into accent ai and for me this is a tool that i i, I love to use it's incredibly powerful but I, i'm of the personal opinion that 
A mask is the best way to control it because otherwise, if you let it kind of run rampant, in other words, if you apply it globally, it doesn't look that good on most photos. There are situations when you can go across the whole photo with Accent AI and it works, especially if you use a really low number, but I prefer to highlight or you know pop certain parts of the photo by containing that with a mask. And that's what I did. I went in and put a, another radial gradient right there in the center, just popping a little bit of the, the path and the waterfall and uh, using Accent AI at 33, it just brings that section to life. So before and after. Now at this point, I actually thought I was done. So I went in and added a vignette and this is just a basic vignette, a high roundness, high feathering, a little bit of inner light and the subjects in the center basically before and after. And I thought, okay, cool, I'm kind of done. But I wasn't done because I realized, oh, hey, and this jumps ahead to the end of the edit, but I was like, ooh, you know what I should do? I should use some atmosphere AI. Now, this isn't a mast, but I used haze, the amount of 40, high lightness, and a depth of 20. And if you look at the before, there it is. Uh, you can see there's a lot of mist coming off of that waterfall because it's so powerful. But you can see kind of the, the mist, if you will, kind of along the I'll call it the horizon line, right? Where the uh, waterfall is hitting the water. It's just giving off tons of spray. But using the haze setting in Atmosphere AI at amount of 40 and that depth and lightness, that's the before and that's the after. It just added a little bit more and it concentrated it in that area and I didn't even have to mask it. So it just fit perfectly there. So I really like that because I'm just playing up the amount of spray that's coming off that waterfall. And then I, I use a tool that I love, which is Mystical. And that was just a global uh, application of it before and after. It does a little bit of kind of what I call romantic lighting. And it creates a little bit more mood, a little bit contrasty. Uh, it pops some of those brighter areas. So before and after. And I just thought it was a nice way to go. And then again, I, I sat. And this is a key tip. Make an edit. Sit on it for a day or whatever. Come back to it. Sit on it. And that's why I said, I think I said at the beginning of this video, I may not yet even be done with this photo yet, but uh, I wanted to walk through my thought process. So hopefully it's giving you some ideas about what you can do in Luminar because you can do a lot and that's what I like to do. So before and after Mystical, um, after sitting on it, I came back and said, well, there's some other things I kind of want to do here. So let me go get Develop, my favorite tool. You can see I got four more Develops to get to and I've already used it, one, two, three, four, five times develop raw. I've used it four so far and I got four to go. So this next one, develop, let me click on that. Let me click on masking actions and show just a little spot right there, a radial mask. And all that's doing is increasing the exposure. So before and after, I just felt like it was a little bit too dark. And you know, it, it's the, the way the path is, and you saw the final, so you kind of know what happens, I think, but the path is dry here in the very front of the photo, and um, therefore it's lighter than up here. When you get closer to the falls, that spray and all that water has got that wet. And so I wanted to kind of change that around a little bit. So I uh, before and after I brighten that area a little bit, uh, and, uh, you know, I just spent a bit of time working on things, including this foreground. So here, if I click on masking, this is another use of develop show. I did a linear gradient across the bottom. So it would, you know, and I faded it in, but then I came in here and I erased it from these edges. Probably the, that was a longer way of, I could have just come in with a brush and just kind of brush this in on the path. That's probably a quicker way to do it, but I do like kind of how it fades. And so the uh, negative 1.75, effectively with a brush, let's call it, in that foreground on the path just to darken it because really to me, too bright and now a little bit darker. I like that. It kind of flows, I think, a little bit better into the photo. Okay, and now develop again. And this time, let me click on masking and actions and show. And this was a complete entire, uh, usually what I call kind of a wrap-up edit. And I talk about this and in other videos. I'll go through and I'll do my uh, develop raw and then I'll do super contrast and then I go into the targeted stuff all the masking and some color work maybe some detail all those kind of things and usually at the very end I'll come back with develop and just hit it uh, everywhere which is what I did here so you can see I thought I was done obviously I wasn't but I came in here and hit it with a little bit of contrast pulled down a little bit of shadows and lifted the whites a little bit and so again a global application of develop at the end of my edit end was in air quotes because it wasn't the end um, but before and after just a little bit of that touch up, just a little bit of oomph at the end is, is something I like to do with develop. 
and I thought I was done and then I sat on it and I came back one more time with develop and what I did here is let me click on mask and mask actions and show and I went into that path again and I just brushed it in and I darkened it a little bit more so before and after if you remember the very beginning it was just a lot lot brighter and I just felt like it was kind of in the way and then I went into a race and I erased all these people and here in a minute that will all catch up but if you look at the before photo muted flat uh, the skies a little needs work the waterfalls doesn't really pop off the background uh, there's people in the way the green is really kind of yellow it's too bright in the front part of the path and it's darker further back the waterfall is not popping the mist isn't jumping out enough there's just a lot a lot uh, that you can do and frankly that i did do and, and i may not be done i reserve the right to continue to edit this photo but that's where i was and that's where i am now and so i cleared the scene of all the tourists because you can go behind that waterfall and ooh, by the way i had a stunning like insane sunset behind that waterfall on uh, the last sunset of our uh iceland uh luminar adventure camp and uh I'm going to edit that in a future video. So if you want to see that, you know, leave me a comment or a thumbs up and let me know. But I'm, I'm going to make that video because I love that sunset. But this is how I started, and that's where I am today. It really comes down to just trying to figure out what you want to do to the photo because you can kind of do whatever you want to do. There's so much power and control. If you take your time and you figure out and you experiment and you mask, you've got to use masks. Uh, and that's why I talk about masks and do a lot of masking in my videos because... Masking is about control, and it gives you the ability to really be targeted and specific and take kind of the bull by the horns. For those of you not in the U.S., that's just a, an expression we have, but it allows you to grab the wheel of the car and drive the car in the direction you want to go instead of applying things globally. If I applied things globally, I would never get to the final edit. I have that photo I started with, my final edit, you know, final. I'm probably going to change it some more, but... Hopefully this gives you an idea of kind of what I think about, how I approach and edit, some of the tools that I use, what I go about doing and thinking about, and how I'm trying to accentuate key elements in the photo to kind of draw the viewer's eye, which is shaping light primarily, with develop primarily. And uh, anyway, that is a let's talk about this photo kind of edit. Hope it gives you some ideas about the fun and the, and the power and the control and the kind of things that you can do in Luminar. If you like this kind of video, leave me a comment down below and let me know. I'll be back soon with more videos and in fact i've got quite a few uh, landscapes from iceland that are just i think stunning and i can't wait to share them in uh, future videos so stay tuned i'll be back with more you guys take care thanks for watching so much i appreciate you guys hanging out here see you in the next one my friends and until then adios